let's talk about WWE restarting Undertaker The Last Ride, finally. Again, I am perplexed by why they decided to take the hiatus on it, but here we go. It, Finishing editing. It's it's back now. We we explored a lot in this episode. I really, to me, the standouts of this was it was sort of very Last Dance-esque with how they switched back to the beginnings of the Undertaker character and mm-hmm. his dedication right from the get-go of living the gimmick, always wearing black, the behind-the-scenes stuff of you know, the footage of them building the casket for Kamala, all that stuff to me, that was my highlight of this episode. What did you think of uh, of this last ride chapter? <laughs> That's why they took a couple weeks off. They probably watched the last dance and like, oh, see how they edit it? We got to do it like that. So we'll take a couple Could weeks. Could be. Re-edit, re-edit it to match that. But no, I'm with you. I think this might be one currently one of, if not my favorite episode thus far for multiple things. One, uh, yeah, I'll just throw it out there. Yeah, the early behind the scenes stuff, him and Bruce Pritchard. Um, the star cast discussion and um, the was not stuff. expecting that, by the way. Yeah. And then uh, before I forget uh, uh, him not appearing at WrestleMania and then the the last clip, their last scene of him and AJ said, hey, give me a minute. So but yeah. just going back to going back to the beginning. Uh, yeah. I mean, to hear more of just the breakdown of the early years, the origin of the Undertaker character. So awesome. And just to see him break those vignettes back in the day used to scare the hell out of me. And so watching him do his thing and then like stop and like the outtakes, he's like, uh, let me do it again. Or he's laughing. I was like, Oh my God, he is a real, he's just a normal guy. <laughs> like that was really fascinating to me. And just seeing like Bruce Pritchard, like helping there's those photos of him, like kind of giving him direction, which does give me a little hope. If he can help build the Undertaker, could he help build this next generation of superstars? So that's my one thing as far as him taking over Raw and SmackDown again, so or in his new role. But yeah, like hearing just the behind the scenes stuff and you know Paul Bear and the the caskets, like oh that was so great. I like that took me back to as a kid. Like that's why I'm like okay, he's finally opening up like 30 years later about this because we've had we lived through that long enough. It's finally okay now to finally get the behind the scenes story of it all now. Like we enjoyed it for it was long enough. It's okay to break kayfabe a little bit for that aspect of it. But then the Starcast discussion, I don't know about you, but that Starcast stuff was really fascinating to me. Well, it, it just it, I just didn't expect it to be like, to be honest with you, I'd kind of forgotten about it. And it didn't seem like such a big deal and then for for Undertaker to open up about how yeah, Vince kind of had the ass over it and you know, but they got through it and they worked through it. And I and I get both perspectives, just as yeah. Undertaker alluded to. You know, he didn't know, really, that it was going to be seen in a certain way. But certainly StarCast and, you know, everything surrounding that really played it up. And everything on social media was going bonkers at that point in time yeah. about The yeah. Undertaker. We probably discussed it on this show. I don't recall. We did. But... Yeah, no, we did. We did. <laughs> well, because remember when they announced it, they said Mark Calloway. They didn't say The Undertaker. They said Mark Calloway. And it's funny, on the on this episode, he said, um, and he, to his credit, he was tiptoeing around. He never said AEW exclusively, but he tiptoe around he's like, i had no idea it was associated with another yeah. promotion i just I, I i joined this pr company it was helping me with my social media presence and they booked this appearance for me so it was interesting is that meaning undertaker probably wasn't a contract so he's trying to think of what he can do life after wwe like how this all kind of came to be that's he didn't really explain that but it sounded like he had the freedom to kind of do what he wants. Therefore, he well, and I, and I think WWE, here. if if memory serves, right after that, they signed him with some like big exactly deal. Yeah. So just to just to cover all of their bases and everything like that. But you know, it, to me, I I like the the previous chapter uh, a lot better than this one. I think it was my favorite episode to date. Uh, I thought this one did a tremendous disservice to Bill Goldberg. I I feel like this this to me harkened back to you know just they kind of. They they didn't let him sort of tell his side of the story of what happened in that match, which is totally unfair. Bill knocked himself silly. He was, but and you know which can happen. It's 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 pro wrestling, and you know Bill cared a lot about wanting to have a good match. And Undertaker did at least mention that, but they didn't give him, you know, the opportunity or at least tell the other side that's like, look, he 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 knocked himself stupid. You know, he wasn't. He it was it was just. I would have loved to hear Undertaker say, look. He was in the same position I was in New Orleans when Brock beat me. You know, like mm-hmm. something happened. He was out of it. 
Uh, right. You know, he wasn't he wasn't working on. Unsa- it's not that he's unsafe. It, so I I thought I thought they did Bill a tremendous disservice with with that uh, segment of the program. I, I was that that disappointed me a great deal. Yeah, it, it, it's. I was curious how they're going to talk about that because I saw the preview for it, and I was like, "All right, are they going to give yeah the full story or let yeah the other person involved give their two cents?" They didn't, so obviously it's just Undertaker's viewpoint only and his wife. And I mean, we've heard him said it before; it was just a bad day in the office. So yeah, I, I, it, it's it happens. Yeah, yeah, it's an accident, and um, and I, I look that match. That match is much better than DX versus Brothers of Destruction was you know so maybe i'm biased in saying that knowing what they should have actually been able to do but yeah well and the thing is uh for also this episode with undertaker i enjoyed i mean yeah him talking about that breaking it down and it it, it, the other thing that they talked about is you know going back to like the star cast thing is he said like he was so committed to the undertaker character wearing black when he goes out and you know black clothes shirts all that stuff sunglasses and he was so committed to the character and trying to keep kayfabe alive there was a lot of opportunities he had to pass up on because he was afraid it would ruin the character or the mystique behind it so i respected that that's why it's like damn for almost 30 years he's been trying to live this gimmick to the fullest and and I think that's what makes this whole series that much more special. He's finally opening up. Yeah. And he's earned that. He's earned that right to finally explain the business. Everyone else has done it for their respective careers. He should be able to, yeah, tell his story, no pun intended, of this whole last ride, the chapters and stuff. But, yeah, he's finally explained a little bit what's going on. So between this, the Stone Cold podcast, it's been great to hear him open up and explain these different events and what was going on for him. And it just makes you wonder how many event things he's – it just shows how loyal, loyal he's been to Vince at WWE that he passed up on previous opportunities. I don't know if it was like endorsements or appearances, but because he wanted to maintain this character and not break it. So that's the the, the quote I took out of it as well from this episode. And this stole WrestleMania stuff that he was able just to kind of enjoy WrestleMania for what it was in the gorilla position, just watch the show. As much as it hurted him to not be out there uh, I enjoyed it. I thought it was funny. He had to fly back home like yep. overnight to pick up his gear and come back. That's <laughs> rule number one. Always bring your gear. Levi Shapiro taught me that on that road trip down to uh, Torrance for that PCW Ultra show. So <laughs> that that's that's the truth. Uh, the it's last thing I want to the the last thing I want to touch on, you know, before the final shot of of with AJ mm-hmm. is the Extreme Rules match, and we took we talked about that when it happened on this show. Yeah. And that is one of my favorite Undertaker matches, certainly of recent memory. He was so good in that. I'm glad that they touched on that because he was moving so well. It was, I remember texting everybody that I could talk wrestling to at the time. I was like, that is perfect usage of the Undertaker. Like, I, I was amped off of that. And so I'm glad they really hit on that because that is a that is a forgotten gem. If you're looking for a recent Undertaker match, that shows you that he can still do it, that's one right there. So I really appreciated them going back and focusing on that a a bit. But you're right, the sort of almost iconic thing that I really did appreciate is AJ stopping him in the hallway and being like, hey, let's have a talk, and then boom, on out, we're teasing, you know, next week's final chapter, whenever they release its final chapter, and I'm sure they're going to touch on the Boneyard match and and everything like that. I, I, I thought that was a very cool way to end the episode. So do you think that was AJ? AJ was the one who said, "Hey, let's do a program for WrestleMania." No, I think I think they wanted they probably just wanted to have a conversation, but I think it works out so perfectly in the confines of this documentary that they could just use it there and make everybody believe that's what it was about. Yeah, playing the seeds for WrestleMania. Yeah, or, yeah. Okay, but no, it was cool. And just Undertaker's like, "Hey, hey, give us a minute." Like it was cool. He was just being nice, like, "Hey, just give us a minute." <laughs> like I was like, "He's just." Saying, hi, stop, hold on, guys. I want to talk to my friend here. So he didn't go like step away or something like that. But yeah, th- th- that was cool as well. And just uh, uh, I guess Elias posted the other day like that it was supposed to lead to like a match with them in Saudi Arabia, but he got hurt or something. And um, the Extreme Rules match, yeah, it was also yeah, it was it was a fun moment for him. And it's just once again, it's just the, it's a constant ongoing theme of like, could this be my last match? Could this be my last match? So. Who knows? I wonder if Chapter Five, 
the the match with AJ, would it be interesting at the very end? He's like, oh yeah, that was my last match. Like, well, um, that's that's what I feel like they're getting ready to sort of prepare us for is that he might announce it through that medium that that was my final match. That that I would not be surprised by that at all. In watching this, I have come away with the fact that I do think that the in hearing him even in this episode again, you know, him saying, yeah, I've talked to Sean a lot uh, over the years, and like I should have left with you, and yeah. that the. To me, the logical final match for the Undertaker's career should be Undertaker and Shawn Michaels one more time at WrestleMania. And this time, it's Undertaker begging Shawn to come out of retirement to give him what he needs so that he can he can sort of exercise his own demons and walk away. I think that's a beautiful story. I think that's what they should do. But I wouldn't be surprised if they use this documentary to give Undertaker this send-off and that's, you know, the Boneyard match might be the final one of his career. I mean, he killed Gallows and Anderson. So probably probably say, wanted for murder. So, I was going to say, they could probably do something at Survivor Series because it would be the 30th anniversary of his debut. But I'm just thinking, if they were to do that, like next year's WrestleMania, it makes sense. L.A., Hollywood market, second largest market in the country. Uh, great spot to do that in. But I'm just thinking for the build-up, like fantasy booking, like he tells Sean, help me rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> help me i can't rest in peace help me rest in peace or it's like the constant like themes like i need your help put me to put me out of my misery that's that but i mean that's the hook though is that is that the irony is that sean is resting in peace his career is at rest he is at rest uh, and that undertaker isn't and that's a you can work shoot that any way you want it but that's sort of the takeaway here and just i hope both of them are in the gym working out and getting ready to just go and, and, and do it justice one more time is what I would love to see.